Welcome to Equip Weekly Bible Studies. We're in the book of Genesis, and we're looking at the life of Joseph. We've already had two lessons on Joseph, and we first met Joseph the Dreamer, where we saw that God gave Joseph dreams about the future, and he saw that he was going to rule over the rest of his family, which is great, but then he told the rest of his family, which was not so wise, so his brothers beat him and sold him as a slave to a distant land and told their father that he had died. And next we saw Joseph the slave, where we saw that Joseph was a man of integrity. He did what was right because it was right, but then he was still betrayed, and his master's wife accused him of doing something he never did, and so now he's in prison. And so today we meet Joseph the prisoner. So go ahead and read Genesis 39 verse 21 up through Genesis 40 verse 8. So it's the end of chapter 39 and the beginning of chapter 40. Read that in your paper Bible, and if you don't have one, I got a link in the description for you. Just like when Joseph was a slave, he gets to a new place and the people there recognize there's something special about him, and it's that God was with him. And so he was such a great prisoner, somehow, he is put in charge of the whole prison. And then this thing happens with the cupbearer and the baker. These were assistants to the Pharaoh. That's the king of Egypt, the most powerful man in the world. Those guys have dreams and they come to Joseph for help. Before we get there, what's next in the story, we need to stop and take a look at this idea of God being there with Joseph. You see, Joseph is in a bad situation. An ancient prison is no fun. But God offers two comforts to him in his bad situation. The first is really important, but it's really the smaller one. That is that he knows that God is going to end this bad situation and God is going to fix it somehow and in some time. The second comfort is the big one, and that is that God is with him in that situation. Yeah, he's in prison, that's really bad, but having God with you makes all the difference in the world. Living in a prison and knowing that God is with you really is better than living in a palace and not knowing that God is with you. Think about it. God is all powerful and all knowing and loves you and wants to bless you. So it's really the best possible thing that you could have. So having God can make up for any kind of bad situation if you know that he's there with you. But any good situation, if you don't have God, what does it really amount to? You're missing the greatest possible thing that you could have. And like we saw last time, if Joseph could remember that God is with him, then we who follow God today should really remember that. Because after Joseph's time, God came to earth as a human being in the form of Jesus Christ. And he died in our place so that if we put our trust in him, we get this new relationship with him that is so much bigger than anything people before Jesus could have imagined. The Bible teaches that God's spirit comes to live in us, that he's no longer just with us. So if Joseph could remember that God is there with him in the bad times, then we should be able to also. Not that it would be easy, as I'm sure none of this was easy for Joseph. Okay, back to the story. Joseph is in prison, and one of the cool things that God does for him is he gives him some big opportunities to help and serve other people. First, there's the prison warden, where Joseph is able to help serve this prison and make it run well, which is amazing since Joseph is one of the prisoners. And then second, we see this situation with these two guys who used to work for the Pharaoh, and they've had these dreams, and they know there's something weird about these dreams, so they ask Joseph about it. And you read there Joseph saying, interpreting dreams is God's business, but go ahead and tell me the dream. He knows that he can't do it on his own, but maybe God will help him interpret these dreams. That means say what the dreams mean to these guys. First, the cup bearer. To bear means to carry. And so he carries the cup for the king. That means he brings him his wine. So the cup bearer, or the former cup bearer, the now current prisoner, he goes to Joseph and says, I had this dream that there were three branches of grapes and I crushed the grapes into wine and gave them to Pharaoh. And Joseph tells him, this is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches represent three days. 
Within three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and restore you to your position as his chief cupbearer. And please remember me and do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. And then we get to the second guy who had a dream. He comes to Joseph and tells him his dream, that he was carrying three baskets of bread, and the birds came and ate the bread. And Joseph tells him, oh, that's not as good of a dream. The three baskets also mean three days, but for you in three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and kill you on a pole. It's called being impaled. Really nasty. And then, sure enough, Pharaoh's birthday came three days later, and he prepared a banquet for all his officials and staff. He summoned his chief cupbearer and baker to join the other officials. He then restored the chief cupbearer to his former position so he could again hand Pharaoh his cup. But Pharaoh impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had predicted when he interpreted his dream. This is a crazy party. Pharaoh gets these guys out of prison, brings these two prisoners there to his party, and he says, you die and you get your old job back. Happy birthday to me. Aside from learning that Pharaoh is a psycho here, we see something else. And that is that this guy that Joseph helped in this huge way is now sitting literally at the right hand of the Pharaoh. And Joseph had already asked him, hey, if this works, if this comes true, and I know it will, Please tell the Pharaoh about me. And now this guy's in a position to help. And then we get to verse 22. It says, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. And then worst of all, the first couple words of the next chapter say two full years later. Joseph is still stuck in prison. He's still in his bad situation. Yet, now he has more reason than ever to believe that God is with him. The dreams that he interpreted with God's help came true. So now he knows for a fact, yes, God is with me. And sometimes it might be like that for us, that you're in this bad situation and you're thinking, when will it end? And we should take comfort knowing that it will end and God will come through and fix the situation. But we should take even greater comfort knowing that God is with us in the bad situation. Next time, we are going to meet Joseph, the prince. And we are going to see why all of these things have happened in the first place. What was God's plan with all of this? And if you don't already know the end of the story, you would never be able to guess what happens next. So please join us then. And until then, be strong in grace.